everyone. Um, I know she gave me a really good introduction, but I thought I would introduce myself again. Uh, my name is Isha Kasliwal. I'm a senior UI UX designer developer focusing on design systems at Twitch in San Francisco. Previously, I was a senior UX engineer on the Lightning Design Systems team at Salesforce. I consider myself a designer who writes code. I care deeply about design, and that has led me to focus on many of the different aspects of how design can be informed in tech, and that's why I write code. So my start into technology was not really traditional. Um, I went to university in New York and I studied history and philosophy, and that's what I was interested in at the time, but I also really liked tech. I didn't know that front-end engineering was a thing back then. I was never really interested in the back-end, but always designing the UI and working with the UI was something that I was super interested in. And I think once I graduated, I learned that front-end engineering is actually a thing. And so um, it helped me transition into more UI engineering and design-specific engineering. Um, and so this talk is gonna be a little bit more focused on design-specific engineering and more of uh, what you can do on the view layer and how you can use tools like TypeScript to um, use the view layer and modify it very easily. So today I wanna talk to you about how TypeScript can power design systems. I know most of the people in this group are developers, but since they are growing so much really, ideally you've heard of the term design system before. Can you actually raise your hand if you know what a design system is? Okay, great, that's great. Um, for those of you who don't, a design system is the single source of truth that groups all the elements that allow teams to design, realize, and develop a product. So my old teammate and friend Gina Ann, who's very popular in the design systems industry, has very eloquently described design systems to be composed of tangible and non-tangible elements. A design system offers a consistent and well-designed pattern library, tools for designers and developers, code-ready components, guidelines, and plenty of usable resources. At the same time, a design system also offers some abstract elements like brand values, shared ways of working, shared beliefs about a product, UI UX best practices, and more. It's where development work intersects with design work. Oh great, and this is, this is what happens when you work at an Amazon company. Lots of pop-ups all day. Oh, okay, great. So it's where development work intersects with design work. A design system contains collections of rules. Just ignore my little Amazon buddy on the corner right there. I can't do anything about him. Um, a design system contains collections of rules, which include guidance, as well as strictly enforced UI, UX code and behavior in the product constraints and principles so that your team at large is operating under the same circumstances and direction, implemented in design and code. Some of the beauty of design systems lies in the fact that the design and code of the system carry all of those rules, constraints, and guidelines within them. The design and code alone, if used and maintained, can afford your company clarity, efficiency, a standard look and feel, and unity. So a design system goes way beyond just design and code. A design systems team has to maintain an entire product of their own. Our customers end up being designers and developers within our own company, actually. So our design systems team ends up giving, basically maintaining and building a product for the rest of the company, not even for the users, essentially. My team operates as a design-focused development team. So the engineers in the rest of our company end up using the components that we create. Because we do this, we have to maintain many aspects of our product, which includes a large variety of different challenges to build and maintain. From support, to documentation, to messaging, and everything in between, a design system is a large body of work. I should. 
move this so that it doesn't keep Um, so for example, imagine if you have a product of your own that you're building at your own company. You have to have support, you have to have documentation, you have to have usage guidelines, you have to have all sorts of things for that product. That's basically what a design systems team does in-house at a company. So if you're working for like Amazon, for example, amazon.com, there's a design systems product team within the company that only services the designers and developers of that company. And so that's basically what I do. Where is the mouse? So a lot of companies, big and small, like Amazon, Facebook, Google, and Shopify have design systems, and they're growing more and more in popularity. So it turns out where I work, which is Twitch, which is a live video streaming company that's mostly focused on gaming, but trying to expand out of gaming, does have one too. And so a lot of what we maintain and what I tend to focus on is component development. So think of a component as small as a button or a component as large as a modal. We work to build and maintain all of it. The process generally starts off as ideating why a specific component, like a button, is necessary. And so once we deem it important, we move on to design. And then before it goes into production, we have to write the code to build it. For many design systems teams, the main concern is the view layer and making sure that there's a clear and consumable API for our company's engineers. We write and maintain our components in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And it turns out that in our JavaScript, we're able to maintain a lot of opinions, rules, and documentation around our designs. And we're able to use that by using React and TypeScript. So here's an example of that process from our own design system. We ideated that we needed a small UI element that can convey status in line with other elements. And based on UX research and best practices, we decided that the best UI to solve that problem would look like a pill, a little small pill looking thing. After ideating, we designed what the pill component would look like. So our designers use Figma for our designing, and this is the pill in our Figma UI kit that the designers can actually go in and grab from. And then we wrote the code for the pill. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Great. So then we wrote the code for the pill in TypeScript. Uh, we created documentation, and luckily, because we're using TypeScript, it's really easy to generate detailed prop-related documentation. So you can see here that here's all the code on the left side, and all of this basically translates to everything that you're seeing on the page right now. And then finally in production, the pill is used by designers and developers where they want to convey status in their UI. So this is an example. And also this is another example of it being used in production. So I mentioned that we use TypeScript in our JavaScript, sta JavaScript stack because we believe that it's a powerful tool when it comes to design systems development. So what exactly is TypeScript? TypeScript is a typed superset of JavaScript that compiles into pla plain JavaScript. So when you are using TypeScript, for example, you can write vanilla JavaScript, you can write React, you can write whatever code you want because it ends up compiling into JavaScript anyway. A good summary of how it's different from vanilla JavaScript is that it provides optional static typing, classes, and interfaces. When using TypeScript, you don't have to write all of your code entirely in TypeScript like I mentioned. And you can use TypeScript with React, which is great, so you can get the power of both in one, which basically means that you are limitless. A couple of benefits that TypeScript provides include style-specific type props. So having style-specific type props offers visual consistency, ensures prop purpose, prevents variable mutations. If you use an IDE that's compatible with TypeScript, which most are at this point, 
The IDE is informed in real time by the TypeScript compiler on its rich type information. There's better autocomplete, snippet generation, renaming, and targeting across the entire code base. There's compilation errors and more. If we reference a component that hasn't been imported, the IDE will automatically add it to your import list for you. If you start typing out an enum, the IDE will automatically reference all the possible values that you could use. And then TypeScript provides exportable interfaces, which makes communicating the intent and limits of your component seamless. An interface is basically the contract that the component must conform to, and it states what needs to be or could be done, but doesn't specify how it will be done. So an interface contains the name of all of the properties along with all of their types. It includes the signature for functions along with the type arguments and return type. So for example, the title function will return a string. And in TypeScript, you can also export these interfaces, allowing similar components to share the same contracts, ensuring consistency. So we've made an interface called Core Interactive Public Props for anything that would need to share link-related interaction design concerns. For our link component, we've extended the Core Link interface to include Core Interactive Public Props. So Core Link will get things like the title prop for free, uh, with added props that we want to stay specific to core link, like underline. So how does TypeScript specifically help design systems? More than anything, TypeScript helps create trust and a stronger relationship between design and development. Designers can trust that their designs are being implemented correctly, and developers can trust that they have access to all of the information they need about a component upon usage. So let me explain that further. As I was researching TypeScript, I came across a really great phrase describing what TypeScript is like, interface-oriented development. TypeScript encourages developers to develop exposing interfaces, which keeps other developers who use the components informed of what the API consists of. TypeScript allows developers to focus on exposed API rather than having to know all of the code by heart. Because of this, TypeScript can enable a softer onboarding for code bases, and especially for design-related and front-end code, which most developers don't want to focus on anyway. Here's an example of how we're able to achieve developer trust by using TypeScript in our design system. Like most design systems, we provide documentation for component usage and guidelines. Something great we're allowed to do because of TypeScript is static code analysis of each component's props. So for our component pagination control, oh, Amazon, why you do this to me? So for our component pagination control, we have all the possible props that you, you could use on this component listed out in this interface. And in our documentation, if you go to the properties tab of each component, you'll find those same props listed out for our developers to easily reference. It's the exact same list of props with additional information about what the props type is and descriptions that we generate from comments that are specifically in the code. So we don't have to do any of this work manually, which is really great because raise your hand if you like writing documentation. One person who I think focuses on accessibility, so that's why I know she likes to write documentation. So we've taken it a step further by also offering, oh my gosh. <laughs> this is just like a, a comedy at this point. Um, we've taken it a step further by also offering developers a functional playground to test components in with the same prop list as well. On each of our documentation pages, we offer a link to open the playground for each component. 
This is an example of what a playground looks like. And I took one of the smallest ones just so it could fit really nicely on a screenshot on the page. But for components that have more props, you know, they go down the list. But the playground offers developers a way to configure all of the props, use them and work with them to create the version of the component that they need. The code changes in real time as well so that they could copy and paste the code if they wanted to. By ha having all of our props per component listed out in interfaces, we're able to easily make use of static code analysis and provide better tooling for our developers. It's like every slide. I promise I didn't like put these in the slides just to keep you all awake either. <laughs> TypeScript also enables designer trust. So take a component design as simple as this, a progress bar. With the combination of interfaces and enums, the components can include all of the possible variations of the design. So the developer can easily get the design right without having to rely on copying and pasting code, knowing specific class names, et cetera. The IDE will also include all of these values through autocomplete and smart suggestions. So the designers don't need to redline their specs and the developers know what exact possible variations they could choose from. So if you look here, when you would be referencing the progress bar, there's only four different types of the progress bar that you could actually reference. And that's you know, baked into the IDE. When you're actually going to use the code, you would only be able to reference default caution error or success. And that's great because you don't have to worry about hex codes, you don't have to worry about class names, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff anymore. That's all just given to you by using TypeScript. Our design system also uses strict naming conventions so that the source of truth doesn't have to be in production code, as it is for many companies. Our source of truth can actually start and live in the design, which is where we all believe that it should be. For example, in our Figma UI kit, we have all of our typography and color styles mapped out and named based on what we would want the functional and type variables to be. We then map those variables to props and provide the exact same type styles and color styles to our components. Because of all, because all of our style opinions get translated to props in the code, we're able to maintain a strict and defined system for all of our designs. This allows us to rarely deviate from the system, ensuring efficiency in code and consistency in the design. And then as a bonus, TypeScript can also enable business and user trust. According to a study done by a computer science researcher, Adrian Coilier, using TypeScript results in a 15% decrease of bugs. Strong typing ensures that there will be less bugs, which helps PMs and other you know, people focused on the business side of things trust that your features will be more efficient. And of course, the users will appreciate having to experience less bugs as well in their end experience. So hopefully by this point, despite having all of the distractions that we've had in this talk, I've convinced you that design systems could greatly benefit from using TypeScript. But I want to close out this talk by expressing that when it comes to writing code, it's important to understand that form follows function. So what does this mean? It means that the shape of our structures and more abstractly the tools that we choose to use and how we use them are dictated by their functions. When it comes to web development, the purpose of everything we do is to make a more usable and safe set of websites and apps. So to take that a step further, intent follows impact. And as a developer or even as a designer, your intent or lack of intent behind anything that you create follows the impact that it has on the users of the web and on each other. It's always cool to use the newest libraries or the newest frameworks, but it's important to gauge whether they actually impact the users and the maintainers of the code properly and positively. And if the creators of the framework had safety and usability in mind when they were creating the framework, which in our industry doesn't always tend to happen. So your intent behind the software you build and put out into the world creates more impact than you might expect so it's important to use tools that consider everyone's safety and also trust. 
And so when we use TypeScript, a big reason why we chose to use it is because it enables so much trust within our organization, because so many things are documented for you, because it just makes a better user experience overall, not just because, you know, it's the cool new thing and everybody wants to try it or something like that. Thank you.